Hi guys, this is Patrick Ayete from NoiPeaks.com. Now, alam nyo naman that Samsung phones are known for their great cameras. At itong Galaxy A71 is not an exception. Now, just recently, nilabas ni Samsung yung kanyang latest flagship phones for 2020, which is the Galaxy S20 series. And we have a full video covering all those three devices plus the Galaxy Z Flip on the links at the top right corner. Yun nga lang, not a lot of people can spend 49999 for a smartphone. At kung isa kayo sa mga ganun tao, then you might want to check out the Galaxy A71 instead. Wala man siyang mga malulupit na features katulad ng 100 times super zoom ng Galaxy S20 Ultra. Pero meron pa rin siyang quad camera setup on the back that's actually very interesting. In fact, yung primary camera nito has a 64 megapixel sensor which is identical dun sa camera ng Galaxy S20. Yun nga lang, wala siyang optical image stabilizer. Tsaka yung flash na kasama na to, although wala naman siguro gumagamit na talaga ng flash ngayon other than para gawing flashlight, medyo hindi yata siya dual tone as per our testing, which will be taking a look further mamaya. Maliba dun sa 64 megapixel camera, meron din siyang 12 megapixel ultra wide sensor. Yun yung camera na nandito sa baba ng 64 megapixel sensor. Tapos yung katabi niya is yung 5 megapixel macro at yung sa pinakataas, meron din tayong 5 megapixel depth sensor. Maliban dun sa OIS or optical image stabilizer, di rin to nilagyan ni Samsung ng telephoto camera. Which is, I think, wala hindi naman masyadong gumagamit. Of course, meron din tayong 32 megapixel sa gitna. Uh, unlike other phones na nasa top left corner, nilagay nila sa gitna. I'm not sure if May benefits ba to? So, titignan natin yan mamaya. So, now that we have discussed the camera hardware that the Galaxy A71 has, uh, move tayo dito sa PC ko. Papakita ko sa inyo yung mga pictures na nakuna namin and idadigest natin yung overall quality at kung maganda nga ba talaga yung camera na to. So, yeah. By the way, I'm using Adobe Lightroom since mas madaling mag-view ng photos dito, mas madaling mag-zoom. So, yeah, let's go. So, yeah, ngayon nandito tayo sa Adobe Lightroom. So, medyo namili na ako kanina ng mga photos na ipapakita ko ngayon. Mag-start muna tayo dito sa 64 megapixel primary camera which also has an f1.8 aperture so medyo wide siya. So, yeah, let's check out the first photo. So, dito lang tayo. So immediately, yung una ko napansin is actually not the actual camera quality but this one. Itong napakalaking watermark. Actually, pag first time mo binuksan yung camera, hindi naman naka-enable itong uh, Galaxy A71 watermark eh. Pero since I know most of you gusto nyong, syempre gusto nyo rin ipalaman sa iba na you've taken that photo using this Galaxy device. Syempre, kailangan lagay nyo rin ng watermark. Pero at this case, medyo hindi ko gusto yung watermark. Masyado siyang malaki. Unlike other phones na medyo mas maliit lang. Usually, nandito lang sa may uh, far left corner. Now, let's take a look at the actual image quality. Ang napansin ko sa mga photos na nakuha ko dito sa Galaxy 71 medyo plain lang yung colors. It's not a bad thing actually, especially if you're a professional photographer kasi mas plain yung colors. Mas natural, mas lifelike. Although alam ko meron din siyang AI scene detection feature. So, pag binuksan mo yun, medyo mas magbabibrant yung color. Pero in our test, medyo pinatay ko lang siya. So, we can see the raw capability. So, as you can see, plain lang talaga yung colors niya. Uh, which I really, really like. So, pwede mo pa siya edit Bahala ka na kung gusto mo pa i-saturate or hindi na. Yung contrast, okay naman. No problems here. Pero pag nag-zoom in ka, mapapansin mo. Medyo artificial yung details. This is actually normal in almost all mobile cameras. Kasi they're doing some post-processing para mas maganda tignan at first look yung image. Pero pag zinumin mo, yun nga, mapapansin mo dito. Yeah, medyo artificial na. Let's take a look at this next one. So, ayun. Dito medyo hindi kita yung watermark pero mabayaan na natin yan. Yan. As you can see, medyo... Pag nag-zoom in ka talaga, yung details medyo hindi ganun kaganda. Oh, and by the way, these photos are actually 16 megapixels. I'm not sure if you're familiar with pixel binning, but what it does is, 
yung apat na magkakatabing pixels, nagpo-form siya into one pixel para medyo mas malaki yung individual pixels. This is actually beneficial since pag mas malaki yung individual pixels, mas maraming light pumapasok, mas maraming details. So yeah, just like the first one, syempre nasa good lighting tayo so medyo maganda talaga yung photo. Contrast again is fine. Medyo mas, napapansin ko nga, medyo mas plain lang dito yung timpla ng mga photos. Plain na yung colors, plain na yung contrast. This will give you more flexibility pag nag-edit ka. So, try natin i-edit konti lang. So, kung gusto mo, pwede mong pang... Yung contrast nga, pwede, laliman mo konti. Lagyan mo ng konting kulay, vibrancy, saturation. Ayan, medyo mas nagkakulay siya ng konti. So, dito tayo sa next one. This next one is a... Just like most of you out there, I know you like taking pictures of your food. As you can see here, I think I enabled the AA sanitation here. Eh. So, kaya medyo mas vibrant yung color na itong pizza. Indoor siya, pero medyo maganda yung lighting ng uh, restaurant kaya yung kinain na namin. Kaya medyo maganda yung photo. Yun nga lang, dito sa pangalawa, mapapansin nyo, yung details medyo nawala ng konti. Probably because of the lighting kasi itong restaurant na ito medyo pangit yung ilaw nila sa loob. Napansin ko rin medyo medyo nalito yung focus dito. No? Mapansin mo ito in focus but yung mga dito sa may bandang foreground wala masyado, background wala na rin. Yung low light shots niya without the night mode, okay pa rin siya, passable. You can see a lot of details din sa loob. Yung sa labas, you wouldn't really notice yung mga grains unless you zoom in. Or grains, noises, yung mga ganun. Speaking of low light, let's take a look din sa night mode feature niya. Now, this first photo was actually taken without the night mode feature. So, ito lang yung raw capability ng 64 megapixel camera niya pag nagpipicture ka sa gabi. So, as you can see, sobrang blurred. Dito na natin talaga may kita yung disadvantages of not having optical image stabilization. Kung may OIS to, siguro mas malinaw pa to eh. Now, let's take a look dun sa photo na kanina natin with night mode. So, ayan. Actually, medyo hindi ganun kalaki yung difference. We've seen other devices that have better night mode feature than this one. Dun sa mga ibang devices na natest namin before, mas malinis yung kuha nila. Which is probably due to the how they use the technology. So, this is software na lang talaga to. This is also a night mode shot. So, ito kasi medyo maliwanag talaga yung lugar eh. Kaya medyo mas malinis siya tignan. Pero pag zinomin mo yung mga details, sobrang artificial talaga. You can't really expect that much from a smartphone camera, especially pag sa gabi. Pero I think Samsung could have done a better job on doing night mode photos. This next one is actually taken inside a hotel room in BGC. Now, this is actually a sunrise photo, so nakita nyo nandito pa rin yung araw. So kahit sobrang liwanag dito sa part na to, makikita nyo yung dynamic range niya sobrang okay pa rin. So kahit maliwanag dito, dito sa darker areas, malinis pa rin talaga siya. Ma visible pa rin kasi if, as you know, kung pangit yung dynamic range mo, maliwanag dito sa sunny area. Pero dito, madilim na. But as you can see on this one, well lit pa rin yung overall photo. I also like the renditions dito sa clouds, medyo lifelike and realistic. Again, bottom line, yung 64 megapixel sensor ng Galaxy A71 takes plain but lifelike images which is beneficial for us, mga professional photographers who wants to, you know, have some flexibility on editing. Pero if you're more like a casual or novice photographer, you can simply enable the AI scene detection to add a bit of color to the final images. Now let's move on to the 12 megapixel ultra wide. Now this shot was taken at the same location kanina dun sa VGC Hotel. As you can see, malinis pa rin yung image pero again, pag zoom in mo, nakita mo na major artificial in details talaga. Pero syempre di ka naman magpo-post ng zoom in photo, especially sa Facebook or sa Instagram. So this would look fine. Yung dynamic range, okay din. Malinis. Contrast is fine. Colors, the same. So, we have no problems really. Ito, indoor shot. Dito mo makikita actually yung talagang benefit ng ultra-wide cameras is mas marami kang makakram in uh, subjects on a single frame. So, ito, malito yung hotel room. 
hindi mo na kailangan umatras pa ng umatras para makuuna ng picture yung buong room mo. Wait, andun ka na mismo, picture ka lang, and then everything will be on frame. Yun nga lang, just like most ultra-wide cameras, mapapansin nyo, medyo stretched out yung corners. Like this one, medyo parang sobrang haba ng kamay ko dito. Tapos dito rin yung salamin. As you can see, medyo skewed siya, medyo tabing eh. But that's just the major drawback on using ultra-wide cameras. Pero as you can see naman, the overall images looks very very nice. Yun nga lang, nandito pa rin yung malaking watermark. Kung marunong kayo mag-photoshop, madali lang burayin yan. Or, huwag nyo lang enable in the first place, di ba? So, yeah. Ito rin, isa rin, itong photo na to, ito rin yung isang major benefits of using ultra-wide. Pag nasa dining table kayo, syempre, food photography, you can get up close dun sa food, or you can take group shots ng food nyo kasama yung mga friends nyo. So, ito makikita nyo. Kasama yung food, kasama yung friends namin dito sa Noy Pigiks. Plus, ito pa nga yung pangalan ng restaurant, Halftime Burgers. Masarap dito, punta ka dyan. Medyo oversaturated lang tong picture na to, napansin ko, but probably that is because of the the yellow light from this bar setup. But overall, ultrawide is good on this device. Meron pa tayo dito isa, dynamic range, very very nice. Yung medyo around 6pm na kasi tayo, so medyo madilim na. But still, details are very very nice. Very very nice. Eto. If you're taking pictures of tall buildings, nakikita nyo, halos pasok yung buong building dun sa ano, hindi mo na kailangan tumawid pa ng kalsada para picture yung buong building. Ito mismo nasa tapat lang ako, medyo inanggulo ko lang siya pataas, and yun, pasok. Ngayon, punta naman tayo din sa 5 megapixel cameras. First, yung macro camera. Ito, this is the first photo that we took. Actually, with the macro camera on the Galaxy A71, you can get up close to a subject for mga 3 to 5 centimeters. Actually, itong photo na to, just to give you a perspective, ito yung wide shot niya, yung pinakita kanina. Ito yun. So, I was able to get close ng ganito kalapit. Kung mapapansin nyo dito, let's put it side by side. Ayan. Kulay blue siya dito, pero dito naging navy blue or something na siya. But still, Sobrang laking benefit if you're into insect photography, bug photography, or whatever. Meron pa tayong isa, this one. Although 5 megapixel lang siya, since sobrang lapit mo, detailed pa rin talaga yung photo, very sharp. May mga details tayo pa rin tayo dito nakikita. Although itong foreground, medyo parang out of focus. But yun na sa loob ng mismong gauge, malinis. Actually, tinry kong kumuha ng macro shot using the 64 megapixel camera. Yun nga lang, when I get to the subject ng ganito kalapit, hindi siya nagpo-focus eh. So, yun talaga yung limitations, kaya dapat meron ka macro camera. Not a lot of people might use it, pero at least nandiyan siya kung kailangan mo siya. Of course, we also have the 5 megapixel depth sensor. Eto. So, dito makikita nyo, sobrang... Okay yung depth sensor niya kasi kuha niya tong buong subject kahit may pagitan sa gitna. So, this one is in focus. This one is not. This one is not. This one is not. This is in focus. This is in focus. So, talaga na distinguish niya kung ano yung foreground, ano yung background. Okay rin yung edge detection niya as you can see. Although dito medyo pumalya siya ng konti. Pero when you zoom it out, di na siya masyadong pansin. But dito, nakikita niyo. Talagang separated yung foreground to the background. Also, may live focus feature siya. So, pwede mong i-adjust yung intensity ng focus or kung saka mag-focus while you're in the camera app or before you take the photo. Plus, kung hindi ka satisfied, pwede mo rin actually edit yung focus dun sa gallery. So, after you taking the photo, kung hindi ka satisfied dun sa focus, pwede mo i-adjust after the fact. Now, lastly, we also have the 32 megapixel selfie camera. As for the quality, since 32 megapixel siya, sobrang linaw at sobrang sharp ng mga selfies na nakuha namin. Ito, this one actually is taken in low light, kaya medyo malabo siya. But despite that, makikita mo pa rin yung details. Yung sa mga facial hairs, yung sa mga <coughs> pimples. As you can see, marami mga pimples. Kitang-kita pa rin siya dito. Pero, if kung gusto niyo yung medyo, you know, matanggal yung pimples or something, meron siyang, of course, AI face beauty. But what I really like about this one is, eto, this is the one with AI face beauty. 
medyo natural looking pa rin yung photo. Unlike most mid-range phones na pag binuksan mo yung AI face beauty, nagiging soft yung buong image. Which is, in return, pumapangit. Yan, as you can see, this is the one with the AI face beauty. And this one is just natural. But for a selfie camera, itong sa Galaxy A71 can really deliver. I also noticed, no, yung camera app, pag naka-selfie mode, there's an option between wide and ultra-wide. Despite the lack of a dedicated ultra-wide sensor. Actually, tingin ko dito, yung selfie camera, medyo wide talaga yung lens niya. Pero, pag binuksan mo yung selfie camera, nakaset lang siya to parang single photo mode. Pero, pag kunwari, if you're taking group photos like this one, if you have friends, medyo nag-zoom out yung photo, resulting to a wider field of view. Para if you're taking group shots, hindi na kayo nagsisiksikan. Of course, other than its photo capabilities, the Galaxy A71 can also record 4K videos. Yun nga lang, upon first using the device, nakaset lang yung video to Full HD. That is because, despite wala siyang optical image stabilizer, meron siya video stabilization. For that to work, kailangan naka Full HD lang yung resolution and not 4K. Now, this first video you'll watch is in 4K resolution without video stabilization. As you can see, sobrang sharp ng details dito sa mga puno. I also like the colors, the contrast, again, medyo plain lang. But as you can see, sobrang shaky nung camera. Actually, I was taking this handheld while walking. So, sobrang shaky niya talaga. No surprises there. This is the 1080p video with video stabilization. Manonotice mo kagad, no? sobrang smooth na nung video. Ando pa rin yung steps, syempre, pero hindi na yung sobrang, you know, yung mga micro shakiness, wala na. Yun nga lang, medyo magsasacrifice ka dun sa image quality. As you can see, medyo yung details, mas softer na since Full HD lang siya. The colors are actually fine but not super vibrant. Again, Samsung is really going with natural tones on the Galaxy A71, so we actually commend them for that. And just for fun, we also played with the Galaxy A71's Hyperlapse Mode. Ang maganda kasi dito, yung Galaxy A71 has a large 4,500mAh battery. So you can take hours of hyperlapse video on a single charge. Well, basically that's it. So to answer our question earlier, okay ba na alternative sa Galaxy S20 itong A71? Well, the answer is yes. I mean, wala man siyang sobrang bilis na 120Hz, sobrang sharp na QHD plus display. Pero itong 6.5 inch Super AMOLED screen itong A71, I really liked it kasi sobrang laki niya to make watching movies or playing games more immersive. Also, wala man siyang flagship na Exynos 990 processor. Pero yung Snapdragon 730 chipset na meron to, partnered with its 8GB of RAM and generous 120GB of internal storage, can handle pretty much everything we throw at it. Meron kami actually yung dedicated gaming review of the Galaxy A71, which you can check on the top right corner. But spoiler alert, yung mga games like Mobile Legends, Call of Duty, Asphalt 9, all are playable on this device at high frame rates with high graphic settings. And of course, there's the cameras. I mean, wala mo siyang optical image stabilizer or a telephoto lens. Pero yung quality ng 64 megapixel primary sensor niya, tsaka yung ultra wide, is almost on par with the one on the Galaxy S20. Bottom line is, kung may pera ka, then go with the Galaxy S20. Pero kung wala kang 50,000, then the Galaxy A71 is the closest thing you can get to a Galaxy S20. This is actually two times cheaper as it retails for only 22,990 pesos. Again, it's Pachineta from Nobis.com. We're actually preparing our full review for the Galaxy A71. So if you have further questions, just put them below and ito try namin idagdag siya dun sa review. Plus, if you just want to say hi or you have video suggestions, please idagay nyo lang sa comments and we'll really appreciate it. And of course, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button, share this video if you liked it, subscribe if you still haven't, hit the bell icon to get notified every time I post a video, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and yeah, basically that's it. Thank you for watching.